What's this, bro? What? Well, I've never told. I was never told. It's okay. Okay, huh? make it short. No, no, no. I thought he's okay. Wait, am I, am I, I don't know. Grata? I don't know. Hash him. Hash him. I thought he's okay. You tell me, but I thought he's, he's not on the list. <laughs> I don't know unless he's. he's still with, uh, DCCR. Have I? You, you asked. Have you ever seen me with DCC? Are you always on the channel? No, I'm on, always on Zoom. Tell me. I'll cancel it. Yeah, okay. Yes, Paperboy. Oh, uh, allow me, bro. On to yes. A few weeks, I watched the. No, I'm not gonna. Oh, so I watched the um the, the program, and basically he was Christianity. Yes. So he was basically which I sort of disagreed with, and I wanted to come to the park to discuss yes. and sort of debunk what yes. he was his reasons for. Yes why Christianity isn't yes. a valid um, yes. religion. So the first question was, so what I'll do, I just ask Ali Dow the question so he remembers and then okay. he can answer it, um, how he answered it and yes. then I'll respond to it. Yes. So the first question was, um, or that, that, that's what the program can you debunk the Trinity in one minute? But obviously if you I've, need I've more done, time, I've, I've, I've done that, that already. that's fine. You tell me what I said wrong. Yeah, but just so people know why, what your reasons are for. Okay, uh, very simply, the Trinity within itself, um, it's, self, it's, it's, it's a self-defeating yani, concept if you think about it. There was a Unitarian, I actually don't remember his name. He actually said, how much longer are the Mohammedans, Muslims, are going to laugh at us with the concept of the Trinity? So he was basically saying, like, you know, reaching out to his Christian, fellow Christian friends, that this idea of Trinity, first thing number one, it doesn't make sense. It goes against God's nature. And he was saying, how much longer are the Muslims are going to be laughing at us with this concept? So, the Trinity within itself, we believe God has certain attributes. He is the all-knowing. He's the all-powerful. Okay. And within his nature, he is infinite. He has no beginning and he has no end. Yes? He's the most wise. So, there are certain attributes that he has that we know that the creation has the op opposite which is what which is that okay you got water yeah so which is what the creation lim knowledge is limited the creation is created has a beginning and has an end the creation is not all powerful so it has a limit so the trinity within itself to say that the godhead is one but divided into three persons of the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son makes absolutely no sense but we don't just reject it based on it making no sense because there are things in Islam that may not make sense but what we do is because we look at God's nature and we say how do you reconcile between God and his nature and his attributes and Jesus being God or the Holy Spirit being God they never mention the Holy Spirit by the way it's always Jesus it's not always Holy Spirit so in a nutshell that's what I would say so in terms of uh, the Trinity, because what happens a lot of the time is Muslims try to appeal to to logic, for example, and say, well, that doesn't make sense. And Ali did expand on if something doesn't fully make sense, uh, it's not necessarily uh, make it false. So, for example, when we say, well, how does Allah descend into the lowest heaven? Muslims will say, well, we don't know. So in terms of the concept of the Trinity, what Ali Dawa uses is tries to use, for example, knowledge of what he knows but there's certain things within reality that people aren't aware of that actually scientists are aware of that actually support this the, the theory of the trinity for example um we have water ice and steam which are all in a sense we have something called the imminent so the economic trinity is which is how uh, god interacts with humans and how people have observed God acting in this way. So when we say, for example, God is like water, everyone knows that water can be ice, water can be steam, or water can be just a normal liquid. So Ali Dawa would say, well, he might say, well, these things cannot coexist at the same time. 
which is what Christianity says. But actually, if there's something called the triple point of water, which is where scientists can actually recreate a certain temperature, which is 0.01, and uh, measure that um, reduced temperature, so the pressure of the water in, within a contained environment, where it creates these three things. So this is what we will say, actually, this is something the church fathers have been saying for a very long time, that actually three things can be one thing, but most people don't aren't aware of these things that science is now revealing to us. So normally people will say, oh, well, that's modalism because one can only exist one after the other. But if we say, actually, scientists have proven that we have something called the triple point of water, then that in itself highlights what even Christians can highlight as something of a miracle of the Bible in saying that something can exist as one. And we also have something called, if we look at quantum physics, we have something called quantum entanglement, where you can have two um, atoms on complete different sides of the universe and they act as one. And Einstein called this uh, mind boggling. He did it, he observed it, but he didn't know how to explain it. So in itself, when we say, God is one, but three persons. These are things that we are seeing, even within creation, now through science, but not many people are aware of. But these are concepts that Christians have been saying from the start. And that's why from a Christian perspective, it makes 100% sense. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah, I would like to refute that. So, um, so you can see again, and again, look, as salam, I don't like to ridicule the people I'm speaking to, and, and I try not to. I try to have a nice civilized discussion, came in a civilized manner, but I don't mean this in a, in, in a way to insult you, but again, you can see the desperation, and I don't blame him, because at the end of the day, if I was to believe in the Trinity, if I was a Christian, I would have to go out my way to justify that to the best of my ability. And that's exactly what Paperboy is doing, because he has gone to the levels of looking into science and you know the different forms it takes, and even said that there was an experiment on that in a closed system that they become at one singular moment, ice, steam and water, mm. or at different times? Not at the same time. So at one single time, mm. it's ice, steam and water. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Let's say arguments sake will go with it. Okay. When God Almighty creates, He creates in different ways. Number one, we believe Jesus was created without a father. We believe Adam was created with no mother and no father. We believe Adam was created uh, with no mother and father, and then Eve was created by the rib of Adam uh, uh, without a mother. So we have these different different scenarios of how magnificent God Almighty is in his creation. But what Paperboy is doing is the following. He's trying his best to find a argument or some kind of like using the concept of water by becoming solid and esteem in different forms and trying his best to fit that into God's nature. Now, my argument is the following. I have an issue with Hindus, Christians, and anybody. The issue is, it doesn't stop at the Trinity. It doesn't stop with one, two, three. There are beliefs out there who believe in millions of gods. The point still stands. Even if you came and showed me a substance that becomes 25 different other substances in one, the point still stands. God within his true nature is what? He is one. There is nothing unlike him. He does not beget nor is he begotten. He doesn't have a moment where he's like, I cease to exist, or I choose to be weak, or I choose to not know. These go against God's nature. So I want you to answer this question. How does God within his nature become a way to get rid of these attributes of knowing, all knowing, all powerful? For example, do you believe God can cease to exist? No. Okay, why are you limiting God? Do you believe God can make a rock so big that he himself cannot lift? No. Why are you limiting God? This is what we hear from the Christians. Why are you limiting God? We accept, just to wrap on, I don't want to longer too much, we're having a nice discussion. We accept, we're on the same page, that there are some things that we cannot grasp that God does. What he does and who he is are two separate questions. I repeat again. What God does, how he creates, what that creation can do and his powers is separate to who he is. You are talking about who he is. I'm talking about the things he does, which I might not know as Muslims. There's many things we don't know. 
Right, so Ali Dao has made an assertion of what he believes God is, not a factual argument of what God is. And I want to just show people this, and this is something called quantum entanglement. I just read it out what it is. Because he says, I appeal to science. But then when Ali, sir, Ali says it's irrational, what is he appealing to? He's appealing to logic, things that we witness. So therefore, I have a right to appeal to uh, science because if it can help us understand the nature of God and it's something we can observe, then my argument is very valid to be built upon science. So according to um, quantum entanglement, and I'll just read it out for you what it is, and I'll give you an example from the Bible. Can you come a little bit here? Sorry. It says, quantum entanglement enables particles to affect each other instantaneously across any distance. Entangled particles would remain connected even if they were on the opposite side of the universe. So what scientists will say is that they cannot be described. So here you see two different particles. And a scientist will say it's actually one, describe it as one, because you cannot describe them as inseparable because they act all together. And then let me go to the Bible and highlight how, why we come up with the concept of the Trinity and how this is in line with what we believe in the Bible. So in John 10, it says, Jesus says, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay my down, lay down my life that I might that I may take it up again. So this is talking about the death and the resurrection. But then when we go to Romans, it says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you, in you, he who raised Christ, Jesus from the dead, will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And then also we go in Romans again where it says, it will be counted to us who believed in him who raised uh, Jesus from the dead. So here we have different passages within the Bible talking about Jesus saying he will raise himself up from the dead, the Holy Spirit will raise him from the dead, and God will raise him from the dead. So this is in the sense when I uh, speak about quantum entanglement and they say these two separate particles act as one, this is a very example from why Christians say within the Bible uh, the Trinity acts as one. So in Genesis, God says, let us make man in our image. Who is God talking to? Is he talking to the angels? The angel didn't help create man. So God is talking to the Son and the Holy Spirit and saying us in a singular action. So this is why in the, in the Bible, in John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was with God. And through him, all things were made. So this is again, this is why I'm appealing to science to say, actually, if we can observe something in science, God's nature is greater than what is in the creation. So if the creation can do simultaneous things at once, what more greater can God's nature do? Because Muslims will say, and I'll make this my last point, Ali can respond, that there is nothing like God. But Muslims believe Allah is one person, one single person, but we believe uh, God is one being, three persons. That is nothing like creation. So the further we go, we know that the more we learn about science, the more it goes against what we rationally know. And that's why I gave an example of, um, let me just quickly show you, that's um, Albert Einstein. And what did he say about um, quantum theory? He says, I cannot absolutely be believe in it because the theory cannot be reconciled with the idea that physics should represent a reality in time and space free from spooky actions at a distance. So even the person, one of the greatest minds of this earth, observed something in science that he couldn't describe. So that's why I'm saying, when people say, well actually this, the Trinity doesn't make sense, or it's illogical, it's what logic are you going by? Because even within science, we observe things that people aren't uh, readily, readily know about, and that's why I appeal to the water, because most people say, well, water can, water, for, to create steam, water has to be hot. For it to be ice, it has to be cold. And at a neutral temperature is when you get water, normal water. But if scientists can recreate all three at once, then what does that say about creation and the possibilities of what our creator is? So that's why then that is the answer in what the creator is. That is his nature. Okay, so what I would advise Paperboy to do is not to rely on science on this specific matter. You know why? Because it might be, and we will, as Muslims, make take full advantage of that. Science changes. Science changes a lot. And some Muslims even make the mistake of the scientific miracles of the Quran. And they have to retract it. Why? Because they were jumping on things and asserting things in the Quran. The Quran doesn't say. 
Allah talks about the seven heavens. That's the ozone layer. Who the hell told you that? So that's the reason why I don't want you to make the same mistake. Because you might come and the scientists come and say, we made a big mistake actually. We're so sorry. So I'm just advising you, don't rely your beliefs on science. Now you talked about me taking my logic um, uh, over whatever it may be. Yeah? Ibn Taymiyyah said, may Allah have mercy on him, the aql, the logic will never go against the aql, uh, the naql, which is the text. But what did he say? He said a sound logic. When you don't have a sound logic, it, the issue is not with what the Quran came down or the scripture came down, it's with your own self. So what I'm saying the following, when you talk about these matters, I can come and easily say, well, hold on a second, let's talk about the double slit experiment. It's in quantum mechanics, quantum physics. <clears throat> what they do is they fire these, um, I've got the word, particles. These particles. They, they, they fire these, not actually particles, I, I want electrons. More, electrons. They fire these electrons through a double slit, and at some moments it becomes, it acts like a wave, and in some moments it acts like a particle. So when it's being observed, it acts a certain way, and when it's not being observed, it acts another way. Now the question is this, can I use the argument and say, okay, now I, I choose to believe in a God, in certain instances he becomes, um, I don't know, the universe, Man. and in some instances he becomes like a wave, another being. How can I use something that is within the creation to judge the creator? What I'm saying is something very simple. We are looking at God's nature, right? We are looking at God's nature. Put Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, all religions to a side. If I was here talking to an atheist, he would accept the basic principles, which is what? If this God exists, he has to be one. Because if he's not one, who created the other one? Let's suppose there's two gods. If this God exists, then who created that God? Did this God create that God or did that God create this God? They would ask simple questions. That's why Justin Barrett in Oxford University, they carried out an experiment, a study, which showed that young kids, they grow up to believing a God. Not Jesus, not Muhammad, put all religions to a side. They all grow up believing in what? One, one being, not two beings, one. That's why Islam says you are born with the fitrah, the innate disposition of acknowledging that God has to be one. Not based on, oh, in the create, imagine, like I said before, imagine we have another substance that becomes one million different substances in once. The Hindus will come and say, what are you on about? Our, our belief is real, look, one million, the substance is, becomes different forms, one million different forms, but it's still the same one. You will have to say to the Hindu, how are you going to disprove the Hindu? He's going to say, well, hold on a second. I have evidence with science in the creation. That's why I believe there is one God and then there are these million sub-gods underneath him. So what I'm saying, again, we go, our logic has to be in line with God's nature. I'm not here questioning, for example, God decided to create the heavens and earth in four days. How did he do it? I don't know. He doesn't know. I don't know. But you're talking about God's nature. I asked you a question, paper boy. Can God cease to exist? No, he can't. Can he make a rock so big he can't lift? No, he can't. Why? Where did you get that logic from? Where did you get that? You're using your logic to say he can't exist. He can't cease to exist. Your logic is sound because you are using your rationality to come to basic conclusions, which is what? God cannot cease to exist. Accept it. God cannot make a rock so big he can't lift because the moment he does, he's weak. The moment he doesn't, he's weak. Where did you get that logic from? You used your rationality. And I'm asking a question. Why is it that when it comes to the Trinity, your logic, you put it aside and go with um, a water substance, which I'll look into, but even let's suppose, argument sake, if we go with it, why are you choosing to have one logic when it comes to him not ceasing to exist and him making a rock he can't live and then telling us about Trinity? So how do you reconcile? Well, this is the thing. I affirm what the scripture says. So the, in the Bible, God says, I am the Alpha and I'm the, the, the Omega, I'm the beginning, I'm the last. So therefore we know from the, the, the scripture itself, we affirm what God says. In terms of the scripture, it says God is all powerful, we affirm that. For example, Ali Dawah. Your hadith says, Ali, um, Ali, Allah descends to the lowest heaven on the last part of the night. Can you explain to us what that means? Yes, sure. So, I asked him a question, he replied with another question. No, I'm going to respond. Okay, but, okay, I'll yeah. answer, I'll answer. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation, he said the seventh, uh, the lowest part of the heaven, the way it befits his majesty. How that happens, how, how it happens, I have no idea how it happens. How does that go against his nature? I'll repeat again, I'm asking a question. If the hadith said, God on the lowest part of the heaven enters into his creation as a man, 
and answers everybody's prayers, I'll say, now we have a problem. Why? Because we believe God Almighty has no beginning, no end, okay, and other uh, attributes, then we'll have a problem. What we're saying is, how does it enter it? We don't know. What we say is that the way it does it is the way it befits his majesty. But how does that, what you're saying, goes against his nature, because who he is, not what he does. So, notice Ali Dawa admitted, Allah enters into his creation, the way his but we, but it, the way it befits his majesty. So why don't I just say that God is a trinity in a way that befits his majesty? Which Muslim would accept that as an excuse? Well, same, not the same thing. We, we, we do not say that God is more than one. We say God is one. So he's cited an experiment to say where people believe in a God. Which Christian says we believe in three gods? We all affirm that we believe in a God. So the concept is what is that God? And that's what we're discussing. So the Ali has his own reasoning. But where does Ali get his reasoning from of what God is, what ca God can do, can and can't do? It's through logic and reasoning. Where do we get logic and reasoning from? The way we interact with reality. This is why I referred to science to say actually, when we observe certain things in reality, these things can also help us to explain the nature of God. So again, that's why when, if you say and affirm what the hadith says that Allah enters in creation, you've admitted Allah into, enters into creation. We don't care about the how, you've admitted something. That's just a way to get around it. Christians say God also inter entered into creation, but we say he became his, the spirit of God entered into a man. That is the difference, but we affirm that God can enter creation. Ali Dawa does too, but he says we don't know how, just in a way that befits his majesty. So that's for, and that's how I said, well, if Muslims have an issue with the Trinity, Christians should start saying, God is a Trinity, three persons and, and one being in a way that befits his, his majesty. Okay, so I'll repeat again, know the difference. Allah comes to the lowest heaven, which heaven? This heaven? We don't know. The way of his majesty. Look at the difference. Allah but comes to the lowest heaven. Let me just ask you a question. Is the lowest heaven one creation? Second. One second, one second. Of course it's creation. Yeah. Yes, what I'm saying is this. One becomes the creation, one enters the creation the way he befits his majesty. And when we're talking about enter, we are not talking about being born of a woman's... Is that kids here? Okay. Born to a woman's private parts. Imagine God Almighty, who created the heavens and the earth, coming out of a, a woman's private parts. And that is the same as God descending to the lowest power of heaven, uh, the heaven, the way it befits his majesty. Let's be just here. Let's be just here. Look at the one, becomes the creation. One enters the lowest heaven, the way it befits his majesty. How is that the same? Please tell me how is that the same. It's unbelievable. Again, Ali is just projecting his opinion of what it should be. Any, like he appealed to the Hindus, everyone has different concepts of what God can do. He said Hindus believe God can be a million avatars. Ali Dawa is not making a strong argument as to why it can't be. He's using it, appealing to Ibn Taymiyyah, trying to use what logic and reasoning. I've, that's why I counted using logic and reasoning. Ibn Taymiyyah is actually against using, the yeah, it depends what you define as logic, just to correct. When it, we, we, we are yeah. known as the Salafis, yeah? Okay, not the not these backbiters, not these oppressive violence who come here. You know who I'm talking about, by the way, yeah? Who am I talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Shamsi. Yeah, there you go. Who yeah. backbites uh, people who have passed away, yeah? Uh, this, these uh, oppressors, yeah? I'm not talking about them, okay? What I'm talking about, we take the text over our logic. We are not like some Shaira or some others who take their logic over the text, yeah? And obviously it's not clear, obviously, how they, what they mean by that, but we take the text over our logic. And our logic, our sound logic, will never go against the Which, text. Where does the logic come from? From God Almighty. But that's the reason why people, if you remember I said to you, you use your logic to say, God cannot cease to exist and God cannot make a rock so big that he cannot live. Why is it, where did you get this from? Said, and why is it that when it comes to the Trinity, you're using a different logic? Why said I appeal to the scripture? So okay. if, the, if the scripture says God is the Alpha and Omega, okay. that means we understand that God has no beginning. Okay, if I say my scripture says God, God is a, a tree, I would have been like, if I said that, yeah, you went from your logic, which was using your logic and science, to define the Trinity, to negating two things, because I could say, why are you saying that? Why could God cease to not exist? Why can't God make a rock he can't live? You, you same logic, you abandoned it. You abandoned right. it. 
And in, in response to Ali's question, Why? using logic Why? about God's, um, what yes. God can do, yes. for example, what is a miracle? A miracle is event. A, a supernatural event designated by God. So therefore, if Allah cannot enter creation, how can he perform a miracle? What is the, because everyone knows a miracle is God's intervention into reality no. to create. Like Moses split the sea. Yes. Jesus gave life to the yes. dead. Which is using what? God's power. So God's power has to enter into creation. No. Well, listen, what so, do you mean by enter? Look, look at what he's doing. So if what the sea mean? splits, yes. it's done by God's power. Yes, but you're saying it has to enter like something. So how does God's power? You're making it seem, because yes. you believe in the Trinity, that always oh, something needs to enter the creation, mm -hmm. you are becoming the creation. You are thinking that God sends something and that travels and then opens the sea. No. Right. God, God says, kun faya kun. Be and it is. But if God's power cannot enter creation, how can no, the miracle no, no, happen? No, I'm not, not understanding. When God wills something, mm -hmm. He doesn't need to send a like a fireball and go. Yes, but it's His power. It doesn't work like that. No, of course, he, what He wills. Yes. God has created creation by saying kun faya kun. Via be, His power. No, be and it is. But what, what He says is be. So God doesn't have power. Man, you because, said no, me. Don't try that. It, when God, God says God something, power. it's His power is the action that does the doing. So God can say... How it's done, we don't know. What we know is when God says be, okay. how that be is... Right. So now you've basically, everyone here, Allah, Ali has to reject God's power because my argument is well, for a miracle to happen, a miracle is God's power uh, creating a supernatural experience that we can all witness, whether it's splitting the sea, raising people from the dead. Ali Dawa is saying, no, it's not God's power. God is saying, but then what is God's power? Because I'm saying it has to be God's power it is that enters creation. I'm saying, do you believe it's in a physical, like God sends... Whatever form it is. Like, like God says, and then something enters... We, we cannot see it, but it's Thank still you. God's power but creating it. But God's power. Right. But you are the same person, the same breath saying, this all-powerful God died on the cross by his creation. But we're saying, how can God's power not enter into creation to create a miracle? When you say enter his creation, what do you mean by his power enter the creation? Because uh, what is... Uh, a miracle a is a event. supernatural event yes. by God. Yes. So course. therefore, God's power has to inter create the intervention. Yes. So therefore, if the split sits, it's by God's power coming, causing it to split. Of course. So if God's power stops here, how is the miracle happening? Uh, do you know what you're doing? This is exactly what you're doing. You're blaming me. You're using your logic. What he's doing is this. Like, and this is a problem that we have as Muslim. We take. We don't say logically. For example. <laughs> A guy, a guy from Amazon comes and he sees me speaking on the phone. I'm like, yo, how you doing, man? Yeah, people, what are you saying? All right, we're going to debate next week. Yeah, okay, bye. And then he goes, bro, and he goes to his tribe and he goes, bro, I saw this guy, yeah, looking fresh still. He was speaking, he was speaking to some device and the device was talking. And the, his tribe men are like, rah, rah, rah. If he's speaking, that means the device has a tongue. If he has a tongue, he has a limb. If he has a limb, he has a body. What they deducted was the following. Just because they heard something, the, the only thing that they know that speaks is human beings. So they were like, raw. if it speaks, it has a tongue. No, it doesn't have a tongue. It's a device. So what you've done is, using your logic, because what you're saying is, does God's power stop here or there? You're doing exactly what others do in the context of, you're trying to bring down what God does to a human level to understand. And that's why you're using the argument of the water. So I ask you a question again. God cannot cease to exist and God cannot make a rock he can't lift. Why are you using your logic to limit these things about God but when it comes to the Trinity, you're like, possible. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this and then we'll go to the next question. So no, in, no, response no. To, in the response to Ali's Dawa's question and his um, example, Ali gave a false analogy. What I would say is if someone has a phone and receives a phone call, the phone call is possible because there's a signal from one phone that sends a signal to the other phone. What Ali Dawa is saying is that there's a phone over here which is not sending a signal but then somehow the person is receiving the call because I'm saying God's power has to come from there to here to create the miracle. So that is a better example of what Ali should do and that's why it doesn't make sense because the phone has to send a signal to the other phone for you to hear the communication. The phone doesn't stop sending a signal for you to hear communication. So if, Allah, if God is creating a miracle, how does his power come to create a miracle that we can witness? It can't stop. So therefore, that's why God's power has to enter in creation you did to create again. the miracle in you itself. You did it again, paper boy. You know what you've done? Look what he said. A signal has to be sent. So what he's saying is that God has to work the same way. So one phone, signal goes to space, comes down. 
Who said God's works like that? This is the problem. God can say, Kun haya kun. B. He say, no, no, God has to send a signal, and the signal has to go to Moses, and Moses says, okay, split the sea. Who said God works like that? Why are you using you, uh, examples in the creation to make God's power the same? God's power is not the same as his creation. Just the way his nature is not the same, that's why we reject the Trinity. Why are you negating two things to God's attribute? He cannot cease to exist, he cannot make a rock so big to live, but at the same breath, you are promoting Trinity. But the thing is, Ali Dawa keeps appealing to logic and reasoning, which he says has been given to us. So I keep saying, notice when I make my point, he said I'm appealing to logic. But Ali Dawa in himself is appealing to logic. Because how is he making these arguments? Well, he says in the Quran it says, or Ibn Tamiya says. So therefore, Ali Dawa is trying to supersede his logic on my logic. I'm, he, I agreed with what God can't do. When he said, when, when I'm saying affirming Why? what God can do, I'm using creation as an example to say, if creation can do these things, God can also do these things. Because, but God does it in a way that is beyond what we know. So that's why I'm appealing to the Trinity. And that's why I'm saying, if God has power, and because uh, everyone knows um, what a miracle is, a miracle is God's intervention or God's supernatural or a supernatural occurrence that we witness. So he says, well, God says, Kun, um, be kun fire kun. You're so close to Islam. You've got the beard. He says, kun fire kun. kun. And then what? Because, because I will challenge Ali Dawa to show me one place in the Quran or Hadith literature where Allah just says kun fire kun and something is beat. Yeah, there because is. Because Adam was created by yeah, his hands. What are you talking about? Okay. Are you serious? Alright, go on. I'm just going to bring something big. Yes, go on. Oh my gosh, you're joking. Because, and just to make this the last statement, we're going to the no, next no, question. No, last no, question. No, no. My, uh, my point was this. If God is all powerful, God has power. So what does God do with this power? When someone prays, if you're their child, if someone is dead, and in your Quran, Jesus Isa raised people from the dead, that is God's power. The splitting of the sea, that is God's power. So therefore, God's power has to come into creation to create these things. Ali Dawa is saying, God has power, but he says something. But what does he do with the power? Where's the power? Okay. It doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so Allah says in the Quran, is it, is it the one who has created the heavens and the earth? It's very interesting, look at this. Mm. Is it the one who has created the heavens and the earth has no power to create, create ones like them? Look at, look at, Allah's talking to you. Why not? He is the supreme creator of the all-knowing. His practice, his practice, when he intends to do something, is no more than he says, be and it comes to be. So pure from every fault is the one in whose hand is the dominion of all the things. Did Ali Dawa answer my question? What was your question? My question was, give me an example where Allah said, be and it is and it was. Yes. I didn't say ask for the statement. I said, because when Adam was made, what was he made from the clay? So I said, what were the heavens made from? They were made from uh, <laughs> something. So that's my question specifically to Ali. Very interesting. Watch was, this. give me an example so, of so, where he so, said so, be and it was. So, so and are it you, was. Are you, are you because, well, let me just finish. Because in the Bible, God said, let there be light. And there was light. So I'm saying that is an example where God says, let there be and something was. So okay. can Ali Dawa give me the same example? So are, are you, are you okay. equating that God Almighty only creates with things that already exist? No, I'm just saying. No, that's what that's what it means. I, I'm saying. You said Allah said B and it is. So I, yes. I said, give me an example where yes. he did that. Well, the, the point I'm seeing is Allah saying right. to the people who negate the things that He can do. Right. Allah saying all I have to say is B and it is, meaning the capability He has to say B and it is. Right. B and it is. You're claiming that we know, for example, this was created by that Adam was yes. created by clay. So right. are you saying that I think it's called um, that? God only creates with what is already there. I'm saying material? in the Bible, I've yeah. given you an example where yes. God said, "Let there be light," yes. and he and there was light. Okay. I'm saying you're saying Ali, Ali, yeah. Ali, Allah yes. does that. Yes. I'm saying where is an example? For example, Allah. He created man from Allah. clay, yes. which was something. So, okay, so give me an example no, where He says, "Be," so, and it is. But this goes back to His nature. So, are you claiming that? In Islam, as Muslims, we believe that God only creates with already existing material. I'm saying prove it. I just did. Allah says in the Quran to the, to the Mushriks. Is that an that, example? That, that, I gave a that, clear that example from the Bible where God says, let there be light and there was light. So right. I'm saying give me the equivalent from, the, from Allah. Guys, guys. 
The ayah says, all God, for those who doubt God can create, Allah is saying, all I have to say is being it is. So when a being, all power of being is created in the universe, are you telling me that God Almighty that you believe in, yeah, that what I believe in, he cannot say be and it is. He's telling you that he can do that. You're saying, give me an example that he did that. I'm saying he's saying that he can do that. So what evidence do you have that Allah has created Adam from clay and other creation, for example, that he cannot do that? Again, Ali Dawa failed to answer my question. I asked him, just give me an example. I didn't say whether conceptually it's true. I just asked where does, give me an example of where that happens because I gave him an example from no, no, the Bible and he couldn't. No, no problem. So we can go into the very, next Very, very clearly, categorically, you can see that if we believe God Almighty can create Adam, can create Jesus with no father, create Adam with no mother and no father, for Paperboy, it's impossible for him to say, be, and it is. Okay. okay. What so else the, can I say? The we'll go into the can next question from the show. And yes. he said, they say that Muhammad copied from the Quran from the Bible. Hmm. Do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad copied from the Bible? Yes. Okay, good. What evidence do you have? Yeah, give, give your response. No, no, what, what evidence do you have? Okay, I, I, I'll let you respond. I will, but you have to tell me what evidence okay. do you have. Okay, so I'd rather Ali Dawa say so, his, so, what he Jami, said on the show. Cut, new discussion. New discussion. Sorry. Okay. So, say, repeat again, please. Yeah. So, I'd rather you respond than I respond to what okay, you said. Okay, the claim, the claim is this, yeah. I'm, I'm responding to the Christians. I'm not even making a claim. The Christians say, the Prophet Muhammad, the peace be upon him, copied from the Bible. And I debunked that. What evidence do you have that the Prophet Muhammad, the peace be upon him, copied from the Bible? Okay. So, basically, uh, in the program I was watching, Ali Dawa basically brought up the story of Pharaoh. And he said, in the time of um, uh, Jacob, Joseph, Joseph, sorry, um, the Bible uses um, Pharaoh, and in the Quran it uses King, and in the time of Moses, it uses Pharaoh. But he, so essentially, what he's trying to say is there were two different terms used historically, so the Quran gets it right. So he said he used that as an example because he said, well, if the if the Bible said. Uh, there was a pharaoh in the time of Joseph, then the Quran would have done the same thing too. Yeah. But this is a very weak argument, and I'll expand on why it's a very weak argument. First of all, in the book of Genesis, it uses the term pharaoh and king. But let's just go with the fact that uh, it said pharaoh, and that was a, an anachronism in the Bible. The reason why this we can see that Muhammad copied from the Bible using this very same example so I'm going to give you some some passages in the Bible so we've got 1 Kings 11:40, where it says Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam but Jeroboam promptly fled to Egypt to King Shishank of Egypt and remained in Egypt until the death of Solomon and we've got another one where it says in the fifth year of King Jeroboam King Shishank of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and that's in 1 Kings and we've got in 2 Kings it mentions King So and in 2 Kings it mentions uh, Pharaoh Nico and the reason why I'm saying this is this Ali's argument was this if the Quran if Muhammad copied from the Bible he would have made an error in using Pharaoh instead of King but what I notice is the, the Bible actually names the names of pharaohs and kings in different books. But conveniently, the book that is mentioned where in Moses and the story of Jacob, it doesn't name him. But how come Allah doesn't know the name of the pharaoh or the king? Because these are the only places in the Bible, or one of the very few places in the Bible, where actually the, the pharaohs or the kings weren't named. But we find in other places, the kings were named at different time periods. So therefore, we would ask ourselves a simple question. How come Allah didn't know the name of Pharaoh? And I'll give the uh, give uh, the Quranic passage to give an example for what I'm arguing, where it doesn't make sense. 
Okay, so in Al and 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 Kabut. Sorry, excuse my Arabic. Verse thirty-nine. It says and Quran. How do you say it? Quran. Karun. Karun. And Karun and Pharaoh and Haman. Moses certainly went with them with clear proofs, but they went about arrogantly in the land, and in no way were they forerunners. So we name four people, three of them by their actual names, and he mentions Pharaoh. Does that as it's as if it's the person's name? So why is it Allah doesn't mention the Pharaoh by name as well? And this is coincidentally is the same as the Bible where it doesn't mention the Pharaohs by name, but in other passages, for example in Kings, it mentions their names. So what's uh, I still haven't understood. Well, where's your evidence that the, uh, the prophet copied from the Bible? Again, so let me reiterate my argument. The Bible mentions Pharaoh's names in different passages, not in Genesis. So this is where we get the story of Moses and Jacob. And in the Quran, the Allah calls Pharaoh Pharaoh, as it's if it's a, a, it's a, title. a, a name. It's not a name, it's a title. Again, let me read the, the, the passage. Yeah, it's a title, it's not a name. Pharaohs had their own names, there was many right. Pharaohs. Exactly, know, I'm, so I'm if the yeah. Pharaoh has his name, yeah. how come the Quran doesn't name the Pharaoh? Because this is the only place in the Bible, yeah. or one of the few places where it doesn't name him. So therefore, what I'm saying is, if Muhammad wasn't copying from the Bible, and Alan knew the Pharaoh's name, rather than say king, you would actually name the person. Because it seems coincidental that this is the passage where the Pharaoh isn't named, but we go to other passages outside of Genesis where the Pharaoh is named, and there's different Pharaohs named, but then the place where it isn't named, there is no name in the Quran. So therefore, if Allah had said, well, this is Pharaoh Tutankhamun, for example, and it doesn't mention it in the Bible, then we can say, where did he get this knowledge from? It's not from the, taken from the Bible. But if in other passages, you name the name of kings and pharaohs, but in, this, in the book of Genesis, you don't, and coincidentally, Allah knows his name, but doesn't, would that give evidence that Allah knew the person's name? It's a very weak point to say that, well, Allah knew the difference between king and pharaoh, but if Alan knows his name, he wouldn't call him by the, the name, the title Pharaoh as a first name. Okay, let me see if I understood this. Yeah, let me see, let me see if I understood Very simple. Okay. All right. So the claim is the following, okay? Because this is something where, you see, anytime as Muslims we bring like solid evidences, I'll be honest with you, if I was a Christian and I saw these miracles, I genuinely don't know how I could just live my life just bypassing them. Yeah, well, I don't know how I can live my life by passing them. Wallahi, it's very simple. In the Quran, the claim is this. The Prophet Muhammad copied from the Bible. For some reason, yeah, he copied from the Bible, but he doesn't copy the mistakes. He doesn't copy the mistakes. One of them is the simple. In the, in the Bible, at the time of Joseph, the ruler is referred to as a pharaoh. At the time of Moses, the ruler is referred to as a pharaoh. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is copied from the Bible, for some odd reason, he calls the time uh, the, uh, the ruler at the time of Joseph. He says, "Hmm, what does the Bible say?" He doesn't know how to read or write, by the way. The prophet Peter doesn't know how to read or write, so he tells his uh, let's see what his argument say. What does it say? He says, "Pharaoh." Hmm, I'll call him king, randomly. Just, I'll call him king. Okay, and then at the time of Moses, he refers to him as a pharaoh. When they discover, discover the Rosetta Stone, because the hieroglyphics was a dead language. When they discovered the Rosetta Stone, they realized that at the time of Joseph, there were no pharaohs. Such dynasty doesn't exist. So my claim is, how can you come and say that the Prophet Muhammad copied from the Bible when he did not copy the mistakes? Now, what people are saying is the following. They say, no. Uh, why is it that Allah didn't give the name of the pharaoh? So my question is, did the pharaoh and the king have a name? Yes. Okay. So he's saying, no, it's like somebody saying, why didn't Allah, like some, some people say this, why didn't God Allah talk about quantum mechanics? Why didn't Allah talk about science? Why? What kind of nonsense is this? Can you imagine me 
saying I reject the Bible because the Bible, I don't know, it doesn't give me mathematical equations to help me in my homework. What kind of, this is pathetic. Instead of addressing the argument which clearly shows the Prophet Muhammad could have not, because he doesn't have to read or write, cannot copy from the Bible, he's claiming, why didn't Allah give the name of that Pharaoh? That Pharaoh had a name. Why didn't Allah give his name? That's a dead argument. I'm so sorry, with all due respect, paper boy, I thought he was going to come with something better. Again, so let me just respond to Ali's point. Please. So he's saying, the question was asked to him, did Muhammad copy from the Bible? And he's, his argument to respond to that question was, well, how did Muhammad know the difference between using the term king and the term using Pharaoh in the Quran? So therefore, he had the knowledge of the distinctions. So my, my question is going further to say, if he had the knowledge of the distinction, how come he didn't have knowledge of the actual name? Because when we look in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, where both these stories are taken from, it doesn't name the Pharaoh or the king. But in later books of the Bible, it starts to name the pharaohs and the kings. So therefore, if you were, a logical argument would be this. If he's saying, well, he didn't, he, how did he know the difference? I'm saying a convincing argument would have been that Allah would not have called Pharaoh, Pharaoh as if it was his first name, not a title. And I read out the verse and I'll read it out again so people can understand. Okay, well, why do you not? Can I just add something? Or shall we? Yeah, go on. Okay, so look, guys, look, guys, wallahi. I mean, look, look, Paper Boy hasn't been in the park for a long time. When he came to me, when he came, it's, it's not no, fine, I'm just a reality. You haven't. Yeah, that's right. No, that's no. right. I'm not going to say nothing. Why is this guy laughing? I didn't even say nothing. I'm just stating the fact that he hasn't been in the park and he accepted it. He just laughed to the point of it. So he hasn't been at the park for a long time, which is okay. I don't blame you. I took a month break as well myself. It can get to your mind, yeah? I thought Paper Boy came and he's got some. Yeah, and he's been working now. Uh, people boys come with the uppercuts. I was, uh, I'll be a bit, I was a bit apprehensive. I was like, ah, oh. people boys got some. Yeah, but stay on top. Paper boy. No, but stay on top. Paper boy. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll read the no, no, verse. No, 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 no. Paper boy. No, I thought. But come on, look, look. I thought you was gonna bring some bangers, yeah. Mm. How are you, paper boy? Please reason with me. How could you come and say to me, totally dismiss? The prophet didn't have to mention king. He did not have to because he's just making stuff up here. Yeah? If he's not a true prophet, he did not have to. It brings no benefit to his prophethood at all to mention king or pharaoh. It means nothing. If people read it, the Muslims have said, king, it doesn't matter. They don't know. They don't care. How is it? Do you not think to yourself, debunk this. How is it he calls king and calls one a pharaoh and it's an historical um, fact? Do you not think to yourself, people, boy, hmm, there must be something supernatural here. Again, responding to Ali's uh, response, and we'll go to the next question afterwards. No, no, I need to pray and I need to go. Okay. So two questions, we're going to do next week. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm I will do two next week. So responding to Ali's question, he says, again, listen to his argument. How did, Ma uh, how did the Quran state the difference between king and pharaoh? So that was his argument. So I'm responding because I watched the program and I'm responding to what his claim was. So for his uppercuts, I'm coming to respond. So I'm saying... But my if defense you, is impregnable. It's been broken. <laughs> but if we look at it logically, I've made the case. This is how we know it was copied because in all the in other sections of the Bible, it names the pharaohs. But in the book of Genesis, it doesn't. So therefore, the copying maybe he got lucky with let's just say for example he, got, he gets it right in terms you, you, of this, in the, in the, I'm, just, I'm correcting just for argument's sake so we're saying he got it right that at the time historically it was you got kings. it right what are you talking about you got it right allah okay oh the quran okay, okay let me finish you. my statement thank you for your honesty anyway I, uh, I so i'm saying let's say for argument's sake the quran gets it right argument's sake but this, it's yeah, good, it's good. Because I, I can bring in another I argument I which would be convoluted. I appreciate because, that you can even say that. Because I Ali, before I respond to what I was going to say, what we also don't have in the Quran is the timelines. So how does Ali Dawa know that at the time of Moses, they used Pharaoh and at the time of Jacob, they used King? Because he has to go to the Bible. So he has to rely on the Bible to get a timeline. Right. Because otherwise, I will ask Ali Dow before he goes to prove ask to me that Moses... Catch up. I'll ask him to, prove, prove, <laughs> <laughs> to provide a source that confirms yeah. that Moses lived in a time where they called the Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Yeah. Because he has to then confirm right. a timeline. Right. And don't use the Bible because Ali Dawa says, no, 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 he says, I go to Christians 
and then I say, if I put poison in this water, would you drink it? And they say no. And Ali Dawa will say, no, you wouldn't because it's corrupted. So before you go, Ali Dawa, please respond. How do you know the times of, J of Joseph and Moses? So just going back to my original okay. point to right. conclude is that my argument was, well, you see in the Bible other Pharaoh's name, the book of Genesis, we don't. So if um, Ali, uh, if Allah was all knowing, he could have easily named the name of the Pharaoh to debunk the Bible. But yet, the Quran uses the same uh, non-naming of the pharaohs and the king as the Bible does. But funnily enough, the Bible in other sections uses their names. Okay, good. So let's, let's make this down. Okay. So now, as you can see, guys, the Christians, they cheer, but they don't know what they're cheering on. Because look, check this out. Because he asked me a question. I haven't even replied. If I couldn't reply, I understand them cheering. He asked a question and they start cheering. What are you cheering because for? Because they know there's no Maybe answer. Maybe I didn't reply. But I haven't even given the answer. I haven't even given the answer. No answer. It's like me saying, okay. it's like me asking a question. Um, argument saying, what's your favorite color? Woo! <laughs> Why are you getting excited asking the question? Let the guy answer. Anyways, anyway, so here's the argument, yeah? Again, check this out. So the argument is that, which he admitted, he and said- And that's my point. Which he, I'm addressing it, which right. he admitted, which is what? That the Quran got it right. It's a historical fact. It's a historical fact, yeah? The prophet, peace be upon him, he doesn't know how to read or write, but he got a historical fact. But Paperboy is saying, no, I'm not happy. I'm like, Paperboy, Wagwan, what's making you upset? Talk to me. He goes, you know what? Why didn't he mention the Pharaoh's name? Now imagine, I come and say, you know what? We have a Sahih Hadith, which we don't. And the uh, name is here. You know what people will say? Yeah, but why didn't you talk about shoe size? Brother, where can I get It's like, shoe size? Okay, what color did he like? Let's be real here. His only argument is what? Why did Allah not mention his name? Pathetic. Question number two. What did he say? He said, we go to the Bible for? The to, timeline. Timeline. Who said I ever went to the Bible? So how do you know? Who said, okay. one second. Who said I went to the Bible? When did Who Moses said any Muslim live? went to the Bible? No, no, no. Who said any Muslim went to the Bible? I said to you, they discovered the Rosetta Stone. So there is, when they discovered the Rosetta Stone and discovered the hieroglyphics, they realized that the dynasty, when the uh, pharaohs started, they had a rough idea. Meaning, anything before that timeline could have not been the case. So who said I went to the Bible? Where's your cheer? Cheer now! Ali, cheer now! Let on. me Woo! respond to that. Again, my finished. question... I haven't finished. I haven't finished. <laughs> yeah, you're quiet. This guy, he forces himself. I feel sorry for his throat. <laughs> what are you laughing at, brother? There's nothing to laugh at. Go on, Bora. Brother, you're behind the camera for a reason. Look at my, my boys, yeah? Nicely Ooh. recording, focus, bro. 4K. Right. Making Talk me look sharp. Me. You just carry on laughing. Top yeah, it. okay. The point is this, okay? I didn't go to the Bible. I've never said I went to the Bible. What I'm saying is, it's a petty argument, but I give you one thing, people, boy. We had a nice discussion. You was calm, collective. Um, you have to nice answer that question. You and, didn't and, answer and, it. I am, I am, I am. And, and, and you admitted and said, I'll give it, <laughs> argument sake, that the Quran has got this fact, and it is a fact. Did Ali Dawa answer my question? No, 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 no. What was the question? My, what was the question? Repeat it again. We don't get it from let the Bible. Me, let me repeat it. We don't get it from the Bible. To establish the timeline of when Joseph lived and when Moses lived. He said he appealed to the Rosetta Stone. But how he doesn't know that doesn't affirm when Joseph lived. No, he, no, he, but let he me affirms when point. the Pharaoh didn't let, start. Let me finish my point. Because he used that as an evidence against the Bible. So yes. for example, to the Bible. scholars will use the Bible to say estimate the time of when Moses lived no. and when Joseph lived. Because there's no archaeological evidence to convincingly support we don't go to the Bible. scholars. We so don't my go to question the Bible. is, if Moses lived at a different time, yeah. he has to prove with evidence when Moses lived. He's saying, well, in the Rosetta Stone, it appealed, it says there was a different time when the kings and pharaohs were, were, um, lived. But that is not evidence of when Moses lived because Moses, for argument's sake, could have lived way before the names changed and the Quran didn't realize that. That could have been a mistake. So that's why he has to establish with evidence when did Moses live. I repeat again. The people who discovered the Rosetta Stone to decide the hieroglyphics, as far as I know, none of them use the Bible. Not a single Muslim who wrote this argument or found this argument used the Bible. We never, I never ever said to you I use the Bible. I don't know where you got that from. So you asking me a question, if I came in and I said we use the Bible, to, I never said that. But I don't use the Bible. I have the Quran, I don't need the Bible. The Bible is full of contradictions and errors which we can discuss in our next argument. I never said I use the Bible. Simple, finished. I never and, used the Bible. Let, let me just, I never said I did. Let me just respond to his point and we can con conclude. Please. The scholars 
He's saying he never used the Bible. But then how would he know when Moses lived to make a mistake or the, in terms of the Bible saying there was a difference between the two? Because you have to establish a timeline of when they lived. So therefore, when he's appealing to the Rosetta Stone, because I did say, for example, in the book of Genesis, uh, it uses the term king and pharaoh. And then in the time of Moses, it uses the term pharaoh. So he's saying in the time of Joseph, they only use the term king. But you have to establish a timeline to say, well, Joseph lived at this time, so this is what the term they were using. And Moses lived at this time, so therefore this is the term they were using. So unless you have a timeline, you cannot make an argument to say, well, the Quran got it right or the Bible got it wrong. The Bible, you would argue, got it wrong, which is not the point I'm going into, but you'll say it got it wrong because they can establish a timeline of when these two approximately uh, live. I, I promise you, I, archaeologists, I, I'm, I'm, I, they might sometimes look into the Bible or the Quran, but they do not use the Bible as a timeline. Yes, they have their own ways of finding certain time frames by fossils and different stuff, even the hieroglyphics. If you decipher the hieroglyphics, this is a language. So, it talks about so my stuff. question is this, how, how would you know Bible? what term was used when no, Joseph no, lived? No, because they discovered the Rosetta Stone and when they deciphered the hieroglyphics, they realized that the dynasty of pharaohs was at a certain time. Which pharaohs? Time. Because no, the Quran doesn't no, no, name the no, pharaohs. No, pharaoh title, not a specific yes, pharaoh. So I'm saying the to you, the title okay. of pharaohs, it was at a specific right. moment of time. Yes. I never said one pharaoh. Moment of time, that's my point. Yes. How do you know when Joseph not lived? Not me, not me. When they discovered the Rosetta Stone, yes. go to them. Why are you coming to me? I didn't use the Bible. Okay. I don't need the Bible. I have the final testament. All right. So my question to you, my point to you was, this is why I said, using I've the Quran the or Islamic literature, give us a timeline of when they lived. No, because then said, we he can. Said, he said, I'm going outside the Quran to prove the Quran is a miracle. I'm not saying the Quran said so, that's why it's right. It's a circular argument. I'm saying I'm going outside of the Quran mm -hmm. to archaeologists who discovered the Rosetta Stone and they deciphered the hieroglyphics right. and they found this fact, did there, which, which supports the Quran. Did, the Ro did the Rosetta Stone say when Joseph Where's lived? The did the Rosetta Stone say when Joseph lived? I don't know. I can say right. yes or no. So then, how do they know. know? How do they know what the terminology? Hello. This is my point in a very simple question. How did he know the term of again, uh, what was again, used? Again. Let, let, let me ask you, you the question. You do your homework. Let, let me, uh, let me just homework. ask you the question before you go. Oh, quickly, yeah. How do they know what term was used when Joseph lived? Okay, what they've done from what I know is that they decided, discovered it and they realized the titles of Pharaoh was, were started to, they started to use it at a specific time frame. Mm. So what they do is they say, okay, roughly, let's suppose, our argument say 2000 BC. It was never used before that. So what they equate is, if, for example, Abraham, Moses, I mean uh, Moses, or any, not Moses, um, Joseph, or any of these characters, if they ever existed, because these people may, may even deny them, it, it's impossible for them to use this title because it never existed. That's the argument uh, here, but, not the Bible. We never his, use the Bible. Listen to his reasoning. He says the Bible got it wrong. By call by saying Joseph referred to yes. Pharaoh. Yes. How does he know that Joseph didn't live in the time when the Pharaohs were called Pharaohs? That's why I'm asking you. What is the timeline? Listen, listen. We know between Moses and uh, Joseph, there's a big time frame. How? Where, where do you, Bible. Where do you, the Bible? Where do you get the Bible? What, what, what okay, do you okay, use? Okay. Okay. That's my you, question. Let what let do you, you use? We have it in the Quran. Yes. It was just mentioned. How do you but, know the time but, frame? But that'll be a circular argument. That's why I'm not using it. You can you use the Quran. No, no. I'm saying where did you establish the timeline? You know why I won't? You know question. why I won't? Because I would say, Quran says A, therefore Quran is right. It's a circular argument. I, that's why I don't use it. Simple so, question. Again, no, guys, I'll, 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 I'll repeat so, my question. So, I'll repeat Quran, my question. The Quran, Very. The Quran says it clearly. <laughs> so I'm not even going to the Quran. I am going to non-Muslim archaeologists. Yeah? Again, what is I'm going to ask him the question Bible. again. I answered it. Yeah, you decide. And, you, and the audience decide. can yeah. un decide whether he answer answered the question. I'll my answer. question was, okay. how does he know yeah. the term Pharaoh yeah. wasn't used by the time Joseph was alive? You have to establish a timeline to know what terms were used. So my question is very simple. If you're saying the Bible got the timeline wrong or the phrase wrong, then prove that Joseph lived before the phrase Pharaoh was used, not after. Okay, just to wrap up, guys, I've repeated it, watch the video. Very simple, he's saying basically the Bible says, it's fine, the Bible says that there's a, um, um, a, a um, time frame, yeah? Look at the argument. You're using your own scripture to prove that one lived before the other. I'm saying I can do the same thing by showing the Quran because the Quran also mentions that. 
dancing around. But I am giving an outside source, which is the archaeologist. And he's saying to me, no, my Bible. Can you imagine me standing here and saying, no, the Quran says this. And then, and then a scientist comes and says, no, but that's not a fact. Well, I go, no, 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 but the Quran says it. Yeah, but that's not. I've said it very categorically and clear. The archaeologists have discovered the Rosetta Stone, they discovered the hieroglyphics, and they found this fact. You accepted this fact that God Almighty got it. There you go. Anyways, watch the video and see for yourself. You can do a wrap up. Thank you very much, baby. You can do a wrap up. Quran yeah, from wrap up. Stone. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'll just do my wrap up. So I, I bought, we'll continue this next week. Um, but my, I brought up two points because, as I said, I watched a program that Ali was on and he responded to criticism, uh, questions about Christianity and why it doesn't make sense. So I, I came to him responding to the criticism. So the first one was about the Trinity. So I spoke about he will use an argument of the Trinity doesn't make sense. And I gave him examples of um, water, ice and steam all coexisting at once is something we can observe by science. And I also gave him the example of quantum mechanics and how the Bible works in terms of if two particles can be um, entangled. This is an example of the Trinity in action because I gave a verse, for example, in Genesis where it says, God says, let us make man in our image, where God is working unilaterally. So, and then I went to the second point where Ali Dawa spoke about, he said, <coughs> Muhammad didn't copy from the Bible because he was able to distinguish between the use of king and pharaoh in the time of Egypt between Joseph and Moses. But he didn't answer my question because how does he know? He said, they use a Rosetta Stone to understand that at a certain point in time, they use two different phrases. But he has not established when did both of these people live? Because if both of these people live after the time these two phrases were uses, used, then the Quran is in error. That's why I asked him, where does he get his time frame from? He uses his criticism because people use the time frame of the Bible to say, well, if Joseph approximately lived in this time and Moses approximately lived in this time, what were the terms that were used? But if he is not using the Bible, if we scrap the Bible, this Rosetta Stone itself is not evidence of when Joseph lived. And that's why I asked him, how does he know Joseph didn't live after the, the, the 19th dynasty, which he couldn't answer. So next week we'll go through some more questions, but we clearly see his answers were insufficient. And until that note, peace out.